A bit of vocabulary today. It is important to all speak the same flamenco language, musically speaking, of course, but also verbally. So I would like to clarify three terms or expressions that are related but can be confusing. I want to explain what is a palo seco, what is tapao, and what is al golpe. Vamos. Hi, this is Guillermo Guillen for Flamenco Maps. Welcome to my channel. Whether you sing flamenco, you dance flamenco, you play guitar, you play palmas, you play cajon, or you play whatever you want to play, sooner or later, you'll have to communicate verbally about flamenco, whether it is during a rehearsal, on stage, or just talking with other people about flamenco. The problem is that the vocabulary that we use is, to say the least, fluctuating, if not sometimes very ambiguous and even sometimes contradictory. Depending on who you are talking to, the place, the era, the musical background or so many things, then the same words or expressions can have different meanings. That doesn't necessarily mean that there are people who are right and people who are wrong. Well, sometimes yes. But it means that language, languages in general, whether it is musical, spoken, written, painted or sign language. Languages are just conventions that we need to know and accept in order to communicate properly. Clarify vocabulary is also very important because in addition to making the communication with others more fluid and easier, it also helps make everything clearer in your head and consequently in your music and your dance. What does a palo seco mean? Contrary to appearances, it has nothing to do with the different palos of the flamenco repertoire. A palo seco literally means with a dry stick. In its origin, this expression is a navigation expression that means lying a hull. Clear, right? On Wednesday 13th of February of 1493, Christopher Columbus wrote in his logbook, from sunset until daylight. There was great trouble with the wind and the high and tempestuous sea. There was lightning three times to the north northeast, a sign of great storm coming. They were lying a hull most of the night. They survived. So what does that mean? It means waiting out a storm by keeping all the sails down and letting the boats drift. The mast, which was the trunk of a tree, un arbol, is then dry, seco. Arbol seco. This is what we find in the original logbook of Christopher Columbus. Later, in the Diccionario de Autoridades, the tree became a stick, the arbol became un palo, and the expression became a palo seco, but still referring to the same way of navigating without sails. But later, we only kept the idea of without accompaniment. And nowadays, it's very commonly used referring to having food or drink without accompaniment like a drink without food, without a tapa, an alcoholic drink without ice or without water, or food without anything, without sauce, without accompaniment, like plain white rice. And then finally, in flamenco, it refers to cante without accompaniment. But there are two things to distinguish. Cantes a palo seco and cantar a palo seco. Los cantes a palo seco are, in the usual classifications of the palos, a family of cantes or palos without accompaniment of any sort. No guitar, no compas, no palmas, just the voice, we would say, a cappella in an academic classical music lingo. De que le sirve la vida. De que le sirve la
When a singer says, I'm going to sing un cante a palo seco, he or she is referring to these different cante. Las tonas, there are many types of tonas. La tona grande, tona de chacón, tona del Cristo, debla, carcelera, martinete. I know that the image of the martinete accompanied by the sound of the anvil is very popular. Hey, I don't know soy. Aquel que era, ni quien tenía que ser. Soy un mueble de tristeza, arrumbadito a la pared. But it's not part of the palo itself. It's more staging. Okay? Luckily for us, because it's not easy to carry an anvil for every concert. The saetas are also cantes a palo seco, the romances, but not the romance por burería or por solea. The original of romances, a palo seco, without anything. And los cantes camperos, or cantes de la faena del campo, the cantes of the labor in the fields, cantes de trilla, cantes de ciegas, arrieras, pajaronas, etc. From their origin, they don't carry or convey any sense of pulse, tempo, or compass in the sense of rhythmic cycle. There is rhythm in the most global sense. It means that the sounds and syllables are organized and they have a specific duration, but no compass. And one first thing here. These cantes a palo seco are free of compass, libres de compass but they are not to be confused with the cantes, toques, or palos libres. The palos libres don't have rhythm, tempo, pulsation, beat, either, but they belong to a very different family, the big, huge family of the fandangos. They are free of compass, not because they don't have compass from the beginning, but because they progressively lost their compass. We'll talk about that another day. Since a palo seco means without accompaniment, by extension, you can sing any other cante that usually goes with an accompaniment, a palo seco. You can sing a solea, a burería, a tango, a cigarilla, a palo seco without accompaniment. So, for example, when a singer says, voy a cantar por solea a palo seco, this is what he or she means. Completely without accompaniment, just the singer alone. But most of the time, it means either without guitar at all, just percussion, palmas, nudillos, why not cajón, any kind of percussion, or without the harmonic aspect of the guitar. No chords, just the rhythmic and percussive aspect that we call tapao. And very often there is a confusion between apalo seco and tapao. The main thing to understand is that tapao refers to a guitar technique. Tapar means to cover, and tapar las cuerdas means cover the strings with your left hand, if you use the guitar this way. So playing with la guitarra tapa with the covered guitar means that you are muting the strings with your left hand. So no chords, no notes, the harmonic and melodic aspects of the guitar are muted, which gives that very specific dry and crisp sound. And you only keep the strumming of the compass with your right hand. You can play any type of compass tapao. For tango, for example. Or for 12-bit solea type compass. For burería. For fandango de Huelva or sevillana. We don't say cante tapao, okay? It doesn't make any sense. Unless you want to cover the singer's mouth. Here again, by extension, tabao became something else. It is also part of the structure of a baile. Un tapao, a tapao, where the dancer is dancing with the accompaniment of the guitarra tapa and most of the time palmas and why not cajón and more percussion. They can play around with very rhythmical material and we can clearly hear the sound of the footwork without the harmony of the guitar.
the tapa also goes with a very festive dimension with a lot of jaleo. <laughs> I have to make a big video about jaleos. So if a dancer is saying, I want to start my escobilla with a tapao, this is what it means. A little trick here, in improvisation mode, in tablao mode, when dancers want to communicate in real time that they want a tapao, they use a secret code. They do this with their hand. Tapao, it means that they want you to cover the strings, to mute the strings with your hand, while playing compass here so they can continue to play around with very rhythmical material. I said earlier that you can sing any palo, any cante a palo seco, right? Without accompaniment at all or just with compass and no guitar. When we play compass only with the nudillos, the knuckles, we call this al golpe. A golpe is a hit, a knock. It is also a footwork element when the dancer hits the floor with the whole sole of the foot. So acompañar al golpe means a company knocking the beats and accents of the compass implied with nudillo. Aquí no se It's quite simple, right? But wait, because now there is something a bit more confusing. Listen to this. On the album it says Solea y Bureria al Golpe. But wait, there is guitar, right? So what's happening here? So hang on here because it's going a bit crazy. There is a palo called Bureria por Solea. Not Solea por Bureria, okay? I have to make another video about that one day because it's a big topic. But Solea por Bureria isn't really a thing in terms of cante. So forget about Solea por Bureria. For now. This palo, Bureria por Solea, comes from Bureria, but not the Bureria Festera, the festive Bureria, not the Bureria para bailar, not the Bureria to dance to. No, it's more serious, it's deeper, it's a Bureria para escuchar, a Bureria to be listened to. And this is how we used to call this cante, Bureria para escuchar or Bureria al golpe. 
But today, most of the time, we call this Buleria por Solea. Maybe because it was very confusing, but on all the recordings, or sometimes, especially in Jerez, you can still hear Buleria para Escuchar or Buleria al Golpe, referring to this specific palo, Buleria por Solea. So the Buleria por Solea evolved from the Buleria to an independent palo with specific styles, specific melodies, and specific characteristics. The compass is slower than a typical bulería, and the compass is in 12 beats. It's a 12 bead solea type compass. It doesn't work with medio compasses like the bulería, but it has nothing to do with guitar or no guitar. So the name of the cante del torta means this. In this cante, in this track, he's singing two palo in one cante. He's singing letras por solea with solea style, solea melodies, and he's singing a Bulería por Solea style, or Bulería al Golpe style. But within the same cante, I always tell you, right, the thing that ultimately differentiates the palos and the cante is the melody of the cante, nothing else. In this case, you can perfectly mix them up, Solea and Bulería por Solea, because they share the same compass and the same harmonic context, the flamenco mode. So that one was a Buleria por Solea or Buleria al Golpe with guitar. And now an example of a Buleria por Solea accompanied al Golpe without guitar, only with nudillo. Santiago y la plazuela Santiago y la plazuela son dos barrios de Jerez. Anda nacido Manuel Torres, prima de mi abuela, y Juanjo Amao también. So theoretically, it could be a bulería al golpe, al golpe, but we wouldn't say that. Everything's good, you are still with me, because we are not done yet. Now how do you do if you want to interpret a bulería, a real bulería, not a bulería por solea, only with compás, palmas, nudillos, guitarra tapa, or no guitar at all, but just compás. We should say a bulería a palo seco, right? And it's called like that many times on many recordings. But we also often say Bulería al golpe. So in this case, Bulería al golpe means Bulería a palo seco. But it's not over. When referring to those heavy bulería, slow bulería, but still bulería, not bulería por solea, that we hear in Lebrija, there is a specific heavy feel. Toma, 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 toma. Well, here too, many times we say bulería al golpe, simply because in this way of expressing the compass, we really feel the golpes, especially the beginning of each medio compás that I call la tierra, and also the other golpes, whether in two field or three field. I talk about this in another video. And if you look for a Bulería al Golpe solo compass track, you know, the audio tracks that we use to practice on, you'll find this kind of thing. And the feel is really special, right? You can really feel the Golpes con peso, heavy. Is it clear? Okay. Now another one. I'm kidding, okay? I think it's enough, right? <laughs> So yes, I know it's confusing, it's a mess, but don't blame me because I'm not responsible for the names and the labels on things in flamenco. But still, I hope I helped clarify these three different expressions. To summarize, a palo seco means two things. Families of palos without accompaniment at all, 
and the type of accompaniment with compass but no guitar or guitar tapa. Tapa also means two things, the guitar technique with the strings muted and the strumming of the compass, and a part of a baile when the guitar is tapa and the dancer does crazy rhythmic things. And al golpe means three things. Accompaniment of nudillos, la bureria al golpe, that means bureria por solea, and also the heavy bureria that we find in a lebrija style, to make it simple. But remember, the words are not the most important thing. The most important thing is what they refer to. It's important to know that all these things exist. And yes, the names sometimes, they just overlap. But it also happens with everyday language, right? And it usually works fine. For example, think of the word bar. There are at least 11 different meanings for the word bar. But in a conversation, we know which one we are talking about, thanks to the context. The same thing with the flamenco vocabulary. The context is very important. And that's it for today. Thank you so much for watching. I hope it is clear. If it's not clear, just watch it again or leave me a comment. Also, tell me if you have other definitions for all these terms I talked about. If you like this video, please give it a like, share it with your friends, subscribe to the channel. Also, consider supporting my work on Patreon. I leave the link in the description. And as always, go and visit flamencomaps.com where I explain all my online classes and courses and my way of teaching flamenco. I see you there. Till then, play Nudie. Vamos.